who is thinking I am this body not the self the self is not thinking the self is not wondering the self knows it is it knows it can change so nothing to think about it just feels I am this feeling of I am creates a reflection in mind mind who likes to play with everything starts playing also with that and detects you know certain things like universe and a body and an energy and then buddhi associates this I am with the information coming in through mind with the body with the breath with the thoughts and with itself and creates the idea I am this this is also actually very natural and need it. Somebody, you know, got to take charge. You know. <laughs> so, uh, some illusionary personality is created who takes charge. That is not even the main problem. The main problem is to think, I am only this. I am only this body. I am only this mind. I am only this intellect. I am only this end. That is the main problem. But the essential error, of course, is the association with all these bodies. Because as we established before, we are only that which we are. <laughs> all else changeable, interchangeable, illusionary. Nothing no reality and this ego this illusionary personality develops slowly slowly in a baby you know, this hand is passing by for a very tiny baby it will say oh how beautiful you know, something is passing by yeah. And it will look and it will enjoy. But as mind gets more control over the body and can, you know, more move the hand at will, then some kind of understanding comes. Oh, this is my hand. This is me. And just slowly, slowly in the baby, the ego develops until at about the age of three years the ego will even further develop beyond body consciousness into its relationships and a child for example who before could very easily be taken by this one and that one and that one and didn't seem to mind as long as you know conditions remained pleasurable would suddenly become very attached to his mother or to his father or to his um, brothers sisters which was not there before, which is the true emerging of, of the ego. If then you say to this child, oh, this is my mother, he will say, no, no, this is my mother. You know, it will start attaching outside of itself. And that is where the ego you know, further develops and we start attaching to our relationships, to our past, to our imaginary future to our qualities, to our feelings, to our career, to our achievements, through what other people think of us, our public image. And then the ego really becomes you know, an illusion, an idea, a concept that starts leading its own life and takes over. Part of it is the direct identification with the different koshas. The body is ill, the ego says, I am ill. The energy is feeling a little dull, the person feels, oh, I am dull. The body is showing some aging, the ego thinks, oh, I am getting 
I am getting fed. Mind is restless, ego thinks I am restless. Intellect is found to be a little short of good concepts, and then ego thinks, oh, I am stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, you know, part of of of, of the the ego, no? and and creating all the problems of the world. Like suppose, you know, somebody's hand gets cut off, accidentally. No, basically this is not a really big problem. I mean, it's quite handy to have two hands, but with one hand we can still do most things huh, that, are, that are needed in life. Like having a cup of tea. But still, for most people, this will become a big, big issue. They will start feeling incomplete, handicapped, disabled, unworthy, they will start feeling ashamed. They will hide it. <laughs> and understandably so, because even other people from their own egos, attached as it is to, you know, amongst many other things, having two hands, will start looking on the other person as pitiful, inferior. It is crazy. In that way, the ego is very crazy. The pain and pleasure duality created by mind. For mind it is not a real problem. It is just a de detection of things, extrapolation, association with concepts, that's all. Only when we feel we are sitting a little bit on a hard surface and so mind is sending us some information about that. It is only when we start feeling, oh, no, I am having a problem, I am sitting on a, on a hard surface, and why can't I have a better place to sit, that we have a problem. All addictions of mind to pleasurable things are not caused by mind. Mind, of course, if it has once found pleasure in one thing and that same thing again, you know, comes into its field of perception, it will indicate so and say, oh, there is another bar of chocolate. But that's not a real problem. If you say no, because you think, well, you know, I already had some, so not very healthy to have more, then mind, you know, will soon be occupied with something else. That is the nature of the child of mind, that is the nature of the monkey mind. You know, if you can't play with this, it will play with something else. Only when the ego associates with mind, the problem comes. Then the ego will say, oh, see, I am addicted to chocolate because again I am seeing this chocolate or again I am thinking of the chocolate which is in the cupboard which was just, you know, an association made by mind which is just trying to do a good job and nothing else. But if we take it personal, if we think we are that, then sure, you know, <laughs> this bar of chocolate in the cupboard will become a big issue and we will have a big problem to stop thinking about it until in the end we may give in to it and eat it and then again feel even more addicted. Hmm? So, all these things are, 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 are a problem uh, of, of the ego, and the ego, you know, will attach to what we have done in the past, and in the future we will do, and create all sorts of unpleasantness, because this future, for example, is not developing as well as we, you know, hoped it would, imagined it would, expected it would. 